Y'all, there's things that God wants to show us. You know Jeremiah 33, 33 the Lord's phone number? <laughs> Call unto me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not. Isn't it good? Amen. He's calling us. That, man, there's things. we got to be the watchman on the wall. Amen. And um, right now, it, there, is, um, there is so many things going on. There's so many signs going on. Um, let, let's talk about some of that today. Is there anything I need to announce today, darling? Okay, then I'm going to toss it to Glenn, and he can wrap it up today at the end of the service, any announcements we need to make. But I, I just want to dive right in and, um, and all to, to what we're seeing. So let's, let's pray and cover our hearts with prayer and um, our minds, our eyes to see. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, to take the blinders off of our eyes today. I take authority over the spirit of, of doubt and unbelief. In Jesus' name, doubt and unbelief. You get out of here. You got to go. You, you spirit of doubt and unbelief, you got to go. Right now we command you to go in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost, the spirit of faith rising up on the inside of us. I take authority over the spirit of fear. Fear, you get out of here in the name of Jesus. No fear here. You have no authority here. I thank you, Lord, for the spirit of faith rising up. God, I thank you for perfect love manifesting in this place that kicks fear out. Lord, I thank you that we are abiding in God, the love that cannot fail us. You are love, and you cannot fail. Jesus, you are Lord. So, Father, I ask you to give me utterance today to speak your word clearly with demonstration of spirit and power. And I thank you for anointing on the hearers to hear the rightly divided word of truth and every blinder falling off of their eyes and every hindrance in their ears, Lord God, to be unstopped in Jesus' name and a heart that can understand and to, can connect things and see things, Lord God, by the spirit. Lord, give us eyes to be watchmen, ears to hear sharply, Lord, to, to, to see what we're seeing and to hear what we're hearing. Lord, we don't want to be like the people in the Bible. They had eyes to see, but they didn't see. They had ears to hear, but they didn't hear. Lord, give us eyes to see and give us ears to hear. And help us to know, to realize, to connect, to believe that what we're seeing is what we're seeing. And to comprehend what you're saying and not to draw back. You said those that draw back, you have no pleasure in. Lord, by faith to, to, to comprehend and apprehend what you're setting before us. Lord, I, I pray for that in the name of Jesus. You will strengthen us, that you will strengthen us in the revelation knowledge of who we are in Christ to be able to grasp the understanding that we need to walk in for the times ahead. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right, so... Um, um, let's, yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Boy, we all were so sleepy driving here this morning. Whew. Okay, she's, she can't hear you. The, the balcony, the balconies. Yeah, this morning when I was driving here, I really had just an inclination to turn around and go back home because I was so sleepy and tired. Yes. And I thought, no, something on the inside of me rose up and said, forsake not the fellowshipping of the saints. Amen. And when I got here, it was like, I just want to encourage Joe and Diane because it yes. was so on, spot on All the songs. with what God was doing and yes. is doing. Because in Timothy 3, 1, it talks about the perilous times coming. Mm -hmm. But it, if we don't stick together and become a unity, become a, a body that's going forth with his power and his might, we won't be useful in his kingdom. That's right. But I just want to encourage you, too. It was so good. So good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Praise God. All right, you can just put it back. Um, yes, glory to God. Right on point. You know, I just want to encourage all of you <clears throat> that we're, we're, we're getting into um, a, a time of signs. Yes. It, it's sign time. 
Yeah, it's sign time. And um, and one, uh, you know, you can put up there Matthew sixteen four. Um, so many signs are happening, y'all, until it's hard for me to, you know, it takes me time to process it. <laughs> I'm processing. All of you might need time to process this. Um, but people have been sending me videos, you know, about the eclipse, right? And lots of people are making videos of it. There's all kinds of videos all out there, all about it, telling you about the sign um, that we're seeing. Um, and Amanda Grace has one. Amanda Grace has one on YouTube on, on the eclipse. And um, I'm going to share some from, from hers because she really, she really went into a lot of different things. And, um, and you can help me fill in some of the gaps, too, because um, during prayer this morning, before service, we have prayer. Uh, Debbie was reading something, too, so you can help me fill, fill in some of those gaps. But Jesus said, a wicked and morally... Now, now let, wait, let me, I, I put verse 4, but, but you kind of got to preface it by saying, you know, Jesus was saying, you... You can tell the signs of the weather. You see that it's red, and you, you say it's going to rain, and all. You can tell all these signs in the heavens, right? Um, kind of back, back up. Let's see what verse 3 says. Let's, let's hear Jesus before he says this. Let's kind of hear, and in the morning it shall be, uh, go, go back up to 2. Let's just start at 1. Let's just start at 1 and read down to 4. Let's get the whole contact. Okay, so who's he talking to? Pharisees and Sadducees came up to Jesus and they asked him to show them a sign. Spectacular miracle from heaven, attesting his divine what? What is this all about, y'all? His authority. How many know it's all about authority? You got to understand the Lord's authority, don't you? You know, Jesus told about the centurion's faith. He said, I have not seen faith like this in, in all of Israel. Why? Because he said, Jesus, don't come to my house. He said, I'm a man and I understand authority. And you give the word only. You just say the word and my servant will be healed. And he said, I have not. You know, how did, how did the centurion have the greatest faith that Jesus had ever seen? He understood authority. You got to get a revelation of God's authority. And there's two groups of people in this earth. No, I shouldn't say in the earth. I should say in the church. There's two groups of people in the church. There's the Thomas kind of faith, right? What's the Thomas kind of faith? What did we always call him? Doubt in Thomas. Wow. What did he say? I will not believe. Unless I can see it. But what did Jesus say about that? He said, more blessed are those. <laughs> Y'all, don't tell me the word of God is not powerful. It is so powerful. Do y'all know when I, I, when every time I say that verse, I can still remember as a little girl, Joyce, living in, the, we were living in the bar. The bar was the downstairs. Our house was the upstairs. And I was a little girl, probably about four or five years old, and Mama was laying me down for a nap. And she'd always tell me stories before she laid me down for a nap. And I loved nap time because Mama would tell me stories. And the story Mama chose to tell me that day was Doubting Thomas. Here we were in a bar. Y'all don't know where all the word goes. Y'all don't know about those people in the bar. Listen, church, do not be judging people out in the world. You don't know where they're at. You don't know what God is doing in their hearts. You don't know how hungry they are, and they just don't know. You don't, you, we got to quit judging. Because you and, cause start loving, and, and, and I don't mean loving their sin and being okay and blessing them and patting their sin on the head because that's telling them they don't have to change, and that's not true. Uh, I, I was listening to Derek Prince, and he was talking about what's wrong with the church ordaining the homosexuals and allowing them to pastor and minister and do all these things and blessing them and all of this. What you're saying to them is you can't change. You can't change. You don't have to change, and we know you can't change, and that is not true because I just talked with somebody this week that was in the homosexual lifestyle and they're changed and Derek Prince was saying that's not true these people that say 
that they can't change. That's not true. Because he said, I got a good friend that was in the homosexual lifestyle, and he came out, and he is changed. And not only is he changed, he's married now, has children, and is pastor in the church and is a good friend of mine. And the Bible says, such were some of you. All of us had things in our lives. All of us had things that we couldn't change, but God changed them. That's telling them you have to be the way you are the rest of your life and there's, you're in this prison and you, there's no way out for you. That is sealing them to uh, a deception, to a, to a bondage. And that's not true. It was for freedom that Christ came to make us free. And when the, it, and when the Son comes in and when the truth comes in, he, he makes us free, completely free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And, and listen, all things are possible to him that believe. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. There is nothing the power of God can't do. If there was one sin that cannot be changed, then that would have been the one sin that kept Jesus from coming out of the grave. But because he came out of the grave, he broke the power of sin, which tells us that there is nothing, absolutely nothing in our lives that we can't conquer with the power of the cross and the resurrection power that flows from the, power that flows from, from the tomb still to this day because he lives. Amen? I live also. Hallelujah. And then you got the Abrahamic faith that they don't have to see. They just believe the word of God, like the centurion. Just speak the word. All you got to do is tell me and, uh, or speak it, and it's done. And you're in any situation. If you can get a word from God, you got your answer, and it's done. Right. Amen? Amen? And so he's telling the Pharisees and Sadducees, you want a sign from heaven, so keep going. And let's read on down, verse 2. Um, and he replied to them, when it is evening, you say it will be fair and weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and has a, has a gloomy and threatening look. And you know how to interpret the appearance of the sky. But you cannot interpret the signs of the times. Now, the Lord made the sun. He made the moon. He made the stars. He made, he made the heavens and he made the earth. And he can talk to his people through anything he has created. He can use a donkey. He can use the star of Bethlehem. Come on. The star of Bethlehem. Can you all imagine the star of Bethlehem? What? Okay, the wise men. We always say there's three wise men because there was gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But that does not mean there was three wise men. There could be a whole entourage of wise men coming from the school of Daniel over in Babylon. And they were watching for signs. Amen. And can you imagine being one of those wise men and looking at that star and going, you know what, that's the star that's prophesied in the book of Numbers. This, and, and, and there's no telling how else that God began to show them this, this is it. This is it. And so here they come, and they go right to Herod. Because they don't know, they're feeling like the rest of us, y'all. We're walking by faith. And we're just trying to follow the Holy Ghost. And we're just trying to, to look at the signs and say, God, what are you saying? Confirm this. Is this you? Is this not you? Right? They're, they're, they're feeling their way. They're looking all around. And so they go to Herod. And they say, hey, there's a star. We believe there's a king that's been born. And he's the king of kings. Amen. Amen. And we've come to worship him. And you know the devil never changes. What did Herod do? He set a trap, didn't he? The devil's the same devil. On, I, it, he just changes people, but he's the same old devil. Um, um, they just released 5,000 more hours of tapes, I've heard, of January 6th. Y'all, I'm telling you. The devil gets in government, and it's all the same, ain't it? Can you imagine being the, the wise men? The conversation that they had when they left Herod. You know what they were? Conspiracy theorists. <laughs> we're in good company. Can you imagine the huddle that the, that the wise men had? After they left Herod? 
I think this whole thing has set a trap. He is, we, if we can discern the star, we can discern his heart. He is setting a trap. He's talking about, oh, I want to come and worship him. You know, they were really wise, weren't they? Today they'd be called conspiracy theorists. And, and, and you know what? They didn't go back to him, did they? They kept right on going. They didn't sit there and reason in their mind, well, you know, God said we should love everybody and give him a chance to come and worship the king, you know, because everybody needs to come to Jesus. Y'all, that is not going to cut it in the end times. You got to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. You got to think like God thinks, and he's always a step ahead of the devil. But I just love everybody, and I just, I just got to help everybody, and I just got to do... You got to obey God. Because there's some people God says don't mess with them. What about the, the magician, Peter, that came and, and he became blind? And all this is New Testament. Come on, y'all. And there's people that, that the book of John says don't even let them in your house and don't bid them Godspeed. And the Bible says from such, turn away. Is that what it says? Yeah. That Yeah, we're supposed to love everybody, but there's some people that God sees their hearts, that they are evil, they are wicked, and they have come to, to, to do the work of the enemy among the church as wolves. And you're not to have anything to do with them. Amen. You, you're to be able to recognize what's a sheep, what's a goat, and what's a wolf. Come on, y'all. So this morning, I, I want us to have some wisdom about us. And I want us to see if, you know, what the Lord is saying. And I, you know, um, I'm going to cover some stuff. But it's pretty interesting what's going on, y'all. And we need to open our eyes. We need to open our eyes and see what God is saying. But we need to see what the enemy's up to, too. Amen? But um, there, there's, a, there's this eclipse coming. And it's coming um, uh, April... April 8th, and he says right here, a wicked and morally unfaithful generation craves a sign. Well, he, called, he just told you what was going on in the Pharisees and the Sadducees, didn't he? He just told you what they were up to, didn't he? Yeah, buddy. A wicked and morally unfaithful generation. These were the religious leaders, and they were up to no good. A wicked and morally unfaithful generation craves a sign, but no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And then he left them and went away. And we've been reading this for years and going, what is he talking about, the sign of Jonah? So then we were talking about, well, then he was in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights, right? That He raised from the dead, just like Jonah was in the well. He raised from the dead. Well, now, Jesus, now this, this eclipse seems to be pointing us back to the cross. It, the first eclipse went across the United States uh, uh, and, and exited out, went across seven, uh, seven cities named Salem, right? And then it exited out uh, right over Charleston, uh, right over Fort Sumter, where the first shot of the Civil War was fired. And then, and then this other one's coming, and it's going to make, when you see the path, it's going to make uh, like an X, and, and the way it does, it's a perfect tav in the Hebrew letter, which is the last alphabet. How many know Jesus is the, the alpha and the omega? The olive and the tav. Amen. And so he's pointing us to us that he's coming. I believe it. And now he's pointing us back to the cross, to the sign of Jonah. All right, because this... Uh, this this thing is, is going over um, eight cities by the name of Nineveh. It's going over, okay, eight. Now, seven of them are in the United States, and one is in Canada, in Nova Scotia. It's going over eight cities. Uh, how many of eight? The number eight is the, is the number of new beginnings. Glory to God. So what is God saying? 
to a wicked and, a, and adulterous generation. You got to repent. Because what was the word that God sent Jonah to preach to Nineveh? Amen. Repent. How many know God is calling this nation to repentance? Yes. He is calling our nation to repentance. And I have no doubt about that at all. Amen. Amen. It is time for this nation to repent. It is time. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face, I will hear from heaven and turn and turn from their wicked ways and I will heal their land. Amen. Glory to God. So the thing about um, this, uh, this, this sign is it will peak. It will actually reach its peak. Not only is, is it going over eight cities named um, Nineveh, but it will, it will peak over Jonah, Texas. Isn't that wild? Which is right outside of Austin. It also crosses a town in Indiana called Rapture. Well, Rapture's not in the Bible, Pastor Simone. The word Rapture is not in the Bible, Pastor Simone. It is in the Latin Bible. Because that's the Latin word for catching up. Amen. Being caught up. The Lord's coming. He's going to catch us away. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, um, what was the message that the Lord gave Jonah to that city? In 40 days, you're toast. <laughs> right? Because he had an attitude when he got there. He couldn't stand these people. These were pagan, demonic, demon-possessed people. Yeah, like some people we know, like some people we know right now in government. <laughs> um, but anyway, he said in 40 days, you're toast. Y'all, we got to get back to Psalm 91. Amen. Only with your eyes will you behold the reward of the wicked. I believe if we'll repent and come to the Lord and call on him, he will hear from heaven. He will save us in a time of trouble. Now, the thing about um, this is it's so interesting is um, that in the, in the city of Nineveh was the temple of Ishtar. She was the goddess of fertility, war, and, uh, and divine law. All right? Now, now, Ishtar has started popping up in our nation. Did you all know that? Um. Do y'all remember, I will never forget this, and the reason I will not forget it is because on June 2nd, I had a dream about um, a demonic spirit screeching. And I come up out of my bed, y'all, I'm doing warfare, I'm in the name of Jesus, I'm mad as a wet set hen. You don't come up in here, you don't get in my face, devil. You know what I'm saying? I come out of that bed and I'm screaming, I'm and so I'm trying to figure out who this thing is uh, screeching at me and Julie sends me a video and I'm listening to um, this pastor teach on um, deliverance and Julie didn't know I had the dream she didn't know any of that she just sent this thing to me and on that thing was about Lilith that was June 2nd, 2023 I went back and looked at the dream June 2nd on June 6, 23 which is 6 6 Six. They put this billboard up in Times Square of Lilith. Do you remember that? They put that, that billboard up there in Times Square, and the fires were breaking out in Canada. And so the, the, the air quality in New York City on 666, they said, was worse than 9-11 because of all the smoke coming down from Canada. And the skies were red behind that sign of Lilith. And they had on the billboard, and I might can show it to you if we can scream here in a minute, they had on the billboard, Welcome to Hell. And New York, the New York, I think it's the New York Post, did a whole article on it. And there's videos on there. Y'all can get your phone out if you want to. I, I don't care. Get your phone out and start Googling it. The, the New York Post put on there um, 
um, Lilith 666, New York Times, I mean, uh, New York Times Square. Put in Times Square, Lilith 666. You can put in 666 or 623. Anyway, that, that article will come up from the New York, New York P Post. Um, let me see here. If I got it. Yeah, let's see here. Are y'all seeing it? Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? Um, hold on. Let me, um, let me get that article over here. Let me see if I can get that article over here. Oh, I know where it is. I know who I sent it to. I sent it to somebody. And I don't want y'all to see all that. So I'm not going to scream in it right now. Okay, here we go. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to send this to me, and then I can scream Mira to you, all right, if possible. We'll see. But um, it's um, the New York Post, the NewYorkPost.com. This is what you look up. Sinister billboard as wildfire smoke choke, chokes New York City. Welcome to hell. All right, and then you can see her. Let's see if she comes here. Yep, she's here. All right, so you want to do the screen mirror real quick? Let's see if we can do it. Let's see if we can do it. Um, screen mirroring. Apple TV Sanctuary. Um, so now, there, you know, it's kind of the... Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay, so look at this, what Doug and Stacy had put out during these Canadian fires. It's not a fire burning in Canada. It's all on fire with reports of helicopters dropping flames from above down to the ground. Stay vigilant. Do y'all see how many fires across Canada broke out? How does that happen? All right. And then, let's see here, this. This right here is the New York Post. Wildfire smoke chokes New York City. Welcome to hell. Manhattan is barely visible. And then you're going to have an ad pop up. Let's see if I can show you the picture, though. Uh, okay, you see that? Look at that. Do y'all see that? I don't know how I can get that bigger. There. Let's see, turn it sideways. Okay, you see that? Okay, so this was the video game that was coming out called Diablo. Okay, and they used Lilith. Do y'all see it's a female? They used Lilith... Uh, to, um, let me get rid of that, okay. They use Lilith as their whatever, you know, marketing. And they called it Diablo. It was a video game, and it was Welcome to Hell, New York, 6-6, six, six, what is that? 2-3, which is what? 3 times 2 is 6, right? So 6-6-6. Six, six, six. All right, now, are y'all ready for this? My mercy. Um, isn't this crazy? You cannot make this stuff up. Let me go back here. Let me go back to mine. All right. So um, now look at this thing. Okay. So now there is, oh, it's flipping around. Let's see here. Flip, flip, flip. Look at this one. How the satanic New York City courthouse statue is all about abortion. They put, they put Lilith which is another name. Okay, so, so Ishtar has a bunch of names. Okay, we ain't talking about a certain god. Satan used to do the, they didn't used to do any history on her. Um, she is a demon, y'all. Do you understand? The Bible says when they worship these gods, they were worshiping demons. God just lays it out plain. They were worshiping demons. It's a demon. Okay, so all of these, they, and it just changed names. It went from Ishtar to Asheroth, to Venus, to Lilith, all of, all of and they say, well, no, Lilith and, and, and Ishtar's two different things. No, they both have the horns. It's all the devil. Do you understand? And then, and then in New York, they had El Diablo, and they had Lilith. Do y'all understand? And she is the goddess that was over, that they worshipped. She was the goddess of prostitution, basically. She's all about prostitution. She's all about immorality. She's all about um, 
destroying family. She's the, and so they are putting her symbol up on the New York City courthouse as a symbol of a pro-abortion. Okay? An eight-foot-tall golden statue, um, and this is all about the satanic imagery so many have pointed out closely resembles um, that employed by a pro-abortion group. So, okay, so now it's become like pro-abortion, right? All right, so then let's go back here. Now, they have moved this thing to Texas. They're moving this thing to Texas. The, the University of Houston, I guess, cancels event as anti-abortion groups protest the satanic campus. And you can see the little horns are statue on campus. Yeah, the, the satanic statue. So they have moved, they have put this statue down in Texas, right? Okay. And then now what, uh, here it is, satanic sculpture coming to Houston. Look at that. And then, um, do y'all remember after the first eclipse, Houston flooded with that hurricane? And now they're taking this statue down to Houston, and guess what's on fire? Texas. Texas is on fire. Do y'all think these fires are catching on by themselves? All right. I'm just checking to see what y'all think about it. Okay, so here, here's the fires breaking out in Texas. Is this any coincidence? All right, so I'm just, I'm just checking with you. Um, isn't this a mess? I'm telling you. Isn't the devil crazy? He's crazy. Now, okay, so, so we know that there is a demonic agenda going on. And this, these little statues is, is just, it's just wanting you to know. <laughs> the devil's just wanting you to know, it's me, it's me. Because <laughs> he's always wanting glory, isn't he? He's always wanting glory. I just want you all to know, it's me, it's me. I want to be worshipped. I, I just want you to know. No, we're not going to worship you. Uh uh We're not doing it. Y'all, um, I, I want us to, while I, right, while I got you all on screen mirroring, let's go back here. I, I want to do something. Can we just pause right in the middle of all of this and pray this prayer? All right, let's all stand. I, 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 while I'm screaming, Mary, and I want to, I want to, let's let's pray this prayer. The confession for executing justice. This is a prayer that Bill Winston um, uh, Ministry came out with years ago, and I think right now is the time to pray it. Won't you? How about we just do this? All right, let's pray this together. Can y'all see it? Is it big enough for you to see? Do I need to enlarge it a little bit? Some of you. Okay, O oh Lord our God, the Most High God, maker of heaven and earth, our creator, our provider, and our protector, you are the just judge of all the earth, sitting on your throne of justice and judgment in the high court of heaven. You, Lord, execute righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. You are the Lord of the Sabaoth, ruler Sabaoth. It's Sabaoth, isn't it? Okay, I want to say it right. Ruler of all, the God of angel armies that fight against our enemies and avenger of our adversaries. Besides you, there is no Savior. Salvation is only of the Lord. Because of your great love towards all mankind, and your love for justice and judgment, you said you forsake not the saints, but come to our aid on earth to uphold the justice upon which your throne in heaven and your kingdom on earth rest. Bring, I'm going to go up. Hold on, let me go up. Let's see. Let's go up. Hold on, let me. Okay, I made it do that. Okay. Bring your righteous judgment upon our adversary. Stretch forth your hand and execute vengeance and recompense against all he is doing and for what he has put us through. Every suffering, humiliation, shame, 
embarrassment, loss, entrapment, come on, sickness, and attack. He is the perpetrator behind all injustices and evil that have come against us through people. So we ask that you execute upon them the judgment written, delivering us out of every affliction. Restore to us everything he has stolen from us and our ancestors. Everything delayed, bring it forth. Now in this season, I command the release of inventions, opportunities, discoveries, businesses, industries, creative ideas, relationships, contracts, awards, inheritance, and increase that have been fraudulently held up, misdirected, sabotaged, blocked, stolen, and destroyed. And that, in cure, that includes cures for cancers and other things. Alzheimer's, all of this that they're making bank on. Diabetes, all of this. Restore to us. Okay, we did that. Execute your vengeance against the enemy speedily and bring to us the full recompense that is due to us as redeemed heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ that we may advance your kingdom among men and nations. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, y'all can find this online. It's the Confession for Executing Justice by Bill Winston. Okay? Bill Winston Ministries, you can pull this up. You can, I got this printed out, and I got it on my vision board. And I was saying it yesterday. And I'm like, bless the Lord, we're going to say this tomorrow. We're not taking it off of no stinking Ishtar and devil in Jesus' name and Lilith and any of them. We're sending them back to hell where they belong or dry places or wherever they go. I don't really care where they go. I just know they can't stay here Amen. in Jesus' name. Come on, y'all. It's time for this nation to turn back to God. All right, you can take, we can take it off a of screen mirror now, I think. I think I'm done. I think I'm done. We'll see. So, um, so let me make sure I covered everything. Uh, so this, this is, um, so Lilith, when, when, when you study Lilith, she is found in Isaiah 34, and I believe it's verse 14, and she's translated as the screech owl. Okay, the Hebrew word in Isaiah 34, 14 for screech owl is Lilith. Is it 34? 14, Those are, there would be, how many times a shaggy go? Okay, keep going, maybe at 17. Is it? It talks about the screech owl. 30, if you put it in the King James. 34, 14, the King James. See what the King James says. The wild beast of the, 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 the desert shall also meet with the wild beast of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow... And the screech owl. Do y'all see the screech owl? When you hit your strongest concordance, it'll say Lilith. And there's a bunch of Jewish myths, and I don't believe any of it. It's a demon, okay? I don't believe any of the myths. And, and there's people actually right now, there's like whole witches' covens that worship Lilith, okay? Because she, what she does, she, um, when you study some of the things that the deliverance ministry say about her, she, she's also like a spirit spouse. So she comes to wreck marriages she comes to destroy uh, children. She's, that's why they got her for this abortion. She, come, she will kidnap children. She will kill children. All of those things. She's, she's wicked. She's evil. And, um, and then, but I, how many of you know all these secret society stuff? How good of a conspiracy theorist are you? Um, how many of you ever heard of the Bohemian Grove? Okay, that thing goes way back. And it's out there in California in the Redwoods. And, um, I mean, many, many presidents have, have joined that Bohemian Grove and have been there. There's pictures of actually Ronald Reagan and uh, Nixon there at the Bohemian Grove. And they have a r r ritual 
that they call the cremation of care. And they have all these pyrotechnic things, you know, to give it all this kind of drama. And there is this ginormous screech owl. And there is some really, uh, this is a secret society, men only, no women could be anywhere near. And there is some really um, weird stuff that's, you know, it's all secret. So, and it's, 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 it's all of these people that are in there um, are part of this New World Order stuff. And then you've got the Bilderberg Group, and y'all can just start Googling all of that stuff. You've got the Bilderberg Group, and they're all kind of intermingled. It's all, and they all got this New World Order, you know, agenda thing. They, they sit in these meetings, and they go to their little secret meetings, and they plot and they plan, okay? And they decide how the nations are going to be run, how the world's going to be run, and, and how it's going to go, and it's going to be this, and it's going to be... A, and and the, way it, the way it's looking, because this thing's been going on for years. Oh, listen, I was reading last... This is one of the things I was researching last night in the middle of the night, Pastor. Um, was I, was, I was researching this Bohemian Grove and this screech owl, and I was reading this article, and it said, Walter Cronkite was the voice of that owl in some of these rituals. Well, I was over, I was, uh, over in St. Augustine, and I was in a... Uh, man, I, maybe I shouldn't have stopped the screen mirroring because I could show you, show you this. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Um, uh, let's see. Did I put him in here? Okay, no. So <clears throat> let me see if I can find him. Yeah, here he is. All right, so if you want to... Uh, Try the screen Mary, and you can see this while I'm telling you about him. Oh, Walter Cronkite. I was in this, uh, there he is. I was in this uh, antique store, and they had these old uh, magazines. And there's your buddy right there. And look how they got him painted. A visit with a nice guy. And you can't see down here, let's see, it's March 26 down in the bottom, 1971. But I want you to look up in the top corner. What's the top corner say? How the U.S. Army spies on citizens in 1971. And this is the voice of your ya, hoot owl, y'all screech owl at the Bohemian Grove. Look at there. 71 was when abortion was passed. 73. Karen's got 73. Okay. Who'll give me 74? <laughs> oh, that's what it was. Yeah. She covered her tracks. It took them two years to get to it. <laughs> okay. I love the way y'all help me preach. It's good stuff, isn't it? Okay, so. so what scripture? Yeah, they're those little. Um, you, you tell me. They're like a, a pan fair. Yeah, they're that's what. That goat park goat. goat. Yeah, pan. yeah. And, and they are symbols of fear. Yeah. They're, they're symbols of fear. Yes. He wants y'all to be very afraid. So guess what you're going to do? The opposite. <laughs> Whatever the devil wants you to do, do the opposite. We're going to rebel against hell. Tanya wore a shirt today. Rebel against hell. So if the devil wants you to be very afraid, don't be. Put your trust in the Lord. Yeah. There you go. All right. Yes. they. Um, and, and I was reading that the Bilderberg group actually came and met in St. Simon's Island because they move all around. Yeah. 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 Okay, so let's get back to this, um, to this eclipse. All right, so this thing, the, the point of entry is coming in to Eagle Pass, Texas, right there on the border where all this stuff is going down, isn't it? Right where all of this stuff with our open border is going down. But, uh, but Amanda Grace was bringing out that, that it's not only... Eagle Pass is not only where all this abortion stuff, I mean, not abortion, but open border stuff is going on, but also um, it was there that the, there was a big 
uh, thing going on in the Civil War, an eclipse going on in the Civil War, and it was um, January 11, 1861, an eclipse right before the Civil War. And there was about Eagle Pass. So you can, y'all can go look at her um, video. It's pretty interesting. Um, in January 8, 1777, so this is right after the revolution started, the Revolutionary War, right? 1776 was the, was the revolution. All right. That year, on, on June 8, George Washington wrote about an upcoming eclipse on, Jan on January 9th, which would have been the next day. And Jefferson wrote also and spoke of it in his letters. So, I think it's pretty interesting that in the first eclipse, the seven, uh, the, the seven cities that, of totality that went over were named Salem, which is peace, and then Trump took office right before Rosh Hashanah. So Salem, you remember Melchizedek, he was the king of Salem, which is another, Salem is another word for Jerusalem, okay? And he was the king of, of Salem after Abraham uh, goes to battle um, for what was stolen. How many know we've had a lot stolen yeah. since that first eclipse? Haven't we? Yeah. We have had a lot stolen. But here's the thing. This eclipse comes right between Purim, which is March 23rd and 24th, and Passover, which is um, April 22nd. And now the Jewish, and then look at this. Look at, look at Exodus 4, 8. Now, Amanda Gress, she did this. She went through the whole Bible and read every scripture in every book that was 4, 8. But the, this Exodus 4, 8 was pretty interesting. Um, so, so this thing comes right in the middle of these three months of deliverance. Y'all, God wants to deliver his people. God wants to deliver his people. Look at Exodus 4, 8. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. I think that's pretty interesting, don't you? You can't make that up. And then what you can do is go, go with uh, her. She goes through every scripture of, of uh, 4, 8, because this, this eclipse is on 4, 8. So this thing is coming right between Purim and Passover. And now the Jewish people are saying, we're hearing, I mean, talk everywhere. You can go to YouTube and you can put in Red Heifer 2024. And every year up until last year, there was always a video that was put out telling you exactly what was going on with the Red Heifer. That it got disqualified. And they tell you everything about it. Last year... It was, there was, it was kind of, in, you know, just, yeah, it was kind of hush-hush. Nothing, it didn't say they had one. It didn't say they didn't have one. This year, I haven't even seen anything from the Temple Institute, have you? I'm just seeing on YouTube uh, different people that are, like, in the know, like, in contact with them and know what's going on, telling you us that, yes, they are planning to sacrifice the red heifer on Passover, and that they're saying, and, and, and I think Joyce brought it out on her um, prayer call, that this war, this war that they're in is all about the Temple Mount. It's all about the Temple Mount. Now, you don't have to believe the eclipse if you don't want to. But I'm telling you, Jesus said that the Antichrist will go into a temple and he will stop the sacrifice. And there can't be any sacrifices until there is a perfect red heifer. And there has not been one up until now. 2,000 years, there has not been a red heifer. And now there is one. And the Jews have already been preparing a temple to build. They got everything ready to go. They've just been waiting on a red heifer, and now they got one. And they don't have to have a temple to start the sacrifice. But if they start the sacrifice, you know the temple's right behind it. And I don't want anybody out there in uh, online land to misinterpret what I'm trying to say. I do not believe that there is any sacrifice for sin but the blood of Jesus Christ. 
He said he, he was sacrificed once and for all. So I do not agree with the sacrifices. That they, this, this is something that the Jewish people are doing because they don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe in the sacrifice of the Savior. But what I am pointing out to you is that Jesus prophesied they would do this. And I am pointing out to you the fact that we have this going on right now. Jesus, you can count on his word. It is true. Whatever he says to you is going to happen. He is a true prophet of God. Amen? He is God himself. He is God made flesh. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no way to the Father but by me. You can believe it. You can take it to the bank. Because he's the one that said there's going to be a temple and there's going to be some sacrifices. Doesn't mean he's ordaining it. Doesn't mean we agree with it. He's just telling you what they're going to do. He's always a step ahead of the devil. He says he's going to bring in the Antichrist. And they probably, all the globalist and the Antichrist agenda is all about it. Y'all listen, you, 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 you can read your Bible and then you can see it coming to pass in the, in the in the headlines. So listen, all you Thomas people out there. If you don't believe, because you're like literally seeing it. Like you can see what the word says and then you can see it and, and you still can't believe. Man, like you follow, you should say we're going to sprinkle some dust on you and call you dead. <laughs> you remember she used to say that? We're going to sprinkle some dirt on you and call you dead. I mean, you, 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 got, you got issues. I mean, you can read it in the Bible, and then you can read it in the headlines, and you still can't believe. I, I, I am, uh, the fear of God is on me for your soul. It, it, there's more Bible prophecy coming to pass right now than any other time. Jesus is coming, y'all. And I'm not trying to put fear on you. Oh, it's the end of the world. When Jesus comes, it's not the end of the world. That's the beginning. That's the end of all this foolishness. That's what that is. That's the king of kings coming to put a stop to all this foolishness. Amen. So the church says, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Even so, come quickly, Lord. We want you to come. I mean, we're tired of this mess. Put a stop to it and let's get on with some good times. Amen. He's coming to set what's wrong right. Now, I want, to, I want to shift a little gear here. If we can go a little bit further. Can you go a little bit further? Yeah. Or did the, did the change of time take too much out of you? <laughs> can we go to Exodus chapter 4 in the Amplified? Because I want to talk about releasing the authority of God with worship. Because any time things are going down and the devil's acting crazy... And um, circumstances are coming against you, and you're feeling depression, you're feeling fear, you're feeling threatened. Oh, and, and uh, it's time to release the authority of God. Yes. All right, I, I, and, I, and I, I've been reading this. I think it was, um, yeah, I've been reading his book. Uh, I think it was Sister Lorraine. She went when he was here, and, 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 and she, had him, she had him to sign it for me. Pastor Simone. Uh, God bless you, Jonathan Collins, Jeremiah 29, I think it's 11, but his, his one, might be 29, one, I don't know, his, his, I think he meant to do 11, but it's real like one's on top of the other, but anyway, so this, I've been reading this because he's talking about these demon spirits, these demons, God, he's got in here all about Ishtar, he's got all of this demonic stuff that's coming, yeah, isn't that cool, and that, that these are, are demons, but let me tell you something, when the demon, demons are acting stupid, what are we, what are we going to do? We're going to worship God. That's not going to stop us. He said, I give you power and authority over all the power of the enemy. You will tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And he said in Matthew, he, he said, he, in Matthew 28, he said, all authority is given unto me. Now you go and preach the gospel. Didn't he say that? You go and preach the gospel. So if he says in both places, all authority, how much does that leave the devil? None. Who has the authority? We have. But you've got to understand how awesome God's authority is. And this is what Moses is, is, is figuring out here. You've you got to understand 
what you have in your hand. See, God uses what you, what, what you have. Amen? And so he, he had the shepherd's staff. Well, what does that remind you of? Shepherd's staff. What does that remind you of? What is a shepherd's staff? What psalm does that remind you of? The rod. What is the rod? What psalm? Thank you. 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. Amen. He leads me and paths the righteous for his name's sake. Yes. He, he anoints my hands with oil. He spreads a table before me in the presence of him. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Praise God. This is a shepherd's rod. And that rod represents authority. And Psalm 23 said, that's what comforts me. I take my comfort that you have all authority. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It's also our weapon of warfare, that staff. Because it will catch us up there. It will get the staff. It will catch us there. You can take it and run wolves off with it, can't you? All right. So, so this is a time of deliverance between, between Purim and between Passover. All right. You got three months of deliverance going on right here. And so... Let's look at Moses. And Moses answered, and behold, uh, they will not believe me or listen to and obey me, for they will say, the Lord has not appeared to you. And the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he did so. And now put in the Amplified. You got it. You got it. You're doing good. Uh, and he did so, and it became a serpent. Now look what the Amplified says this, this became. The symbol of royal and divine power worn on the crown of the pharaohs. And Mo, what did Moses, when, Mo, when that thing turned into a rod, what did Moses do? Man, the power and the authority in that rod made Moses tremble. And the fact that the Lord turned it into the symbol on the Pharaoh, what was he telling Moses? He said, he said to Moses, put forth your hand and take it by the tail. Y'all, I saw a big old cotton mouth yesterday, and ain't no way I'd take that thing by the tail unless the Lord had told me to. Man, oh, man. Y'all be careful. They, they crawling out there. Keep your pistol loaded. Mine wasn't loaded. I had one shot, and I missed. <laughs> <sighs> I got it loaded now, though. I'm ready. But ain't no way I'd take that thing by the tail unless God told me to, Right? Because it's a fearful thing, isn't it? But it represents the authority of the demonic realm. Because what Moses, is, it, it, what Moses, he said, take that thing by the tail. And he stretched out his hand and he caught it and it became a rod in his hand. Now, y'all, this is powerful. What, what God is telling Moses is, what was he showing him? He say, he's saying, Moses, there is no authority and power in the earth. That is it subject to God's authority. It's all a house of cards. Proverbs 8, 15 says, By me kings reign and rulers decree justice. By me princes rules and, and nobles, even all the judges and the governors of the earth. Daniel 2, 21, he removes kings and he sets kings up. Romans 13, 1, there's no authority except from God by his permission, his sanction. And those that exist do so by God's permission. That's what he's telling Moses. And this rod represents Jesus Christ taking authority. Because Jesus went to a cross and became the serpent on the pole. That God told Moses, he said, put the serpent on the pole. And anybody that's been bitten by the snake, tell them to look at it. That was Jesus. Jesus became the serpent. And then when Moses grabbed it, he became the rod again. So Jesus was made a serpent on a pole that all authority might be given to him, that he has all authority. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And now he says, I'm giving it to you. Yes. Now you release my authority. I don't care what the devil's doing. It doesn't matter what the devil's doing. What matters is what we're going to do. 
And you can go to any kind of meeting right now, any kind of meeting about politics and, and you know, the prophetic meetings and all these things. And they'll tell you, everybody's saying the same thing. You know who we blame for all this mess in America? The church. For not taking their rightful place. Well, we're just going to stay out of politics. And guess who's going to run them? The devil. A gate to hell. That's right. So it's time for us to step up, amen? Now, now um, let's keep going. And uh, Moses said, he, and the Lord said to Moses, put forth your hand and take it by the tail. And he stretched out his hand and caught it, and it became a rod. This you shall do, said the Lord, and the elders may believe that the Lord, the God of, our fa- of their fathers, of Abraham, of Isaac, and Jacob, has indeed appeared to you. Glory to God. And then he did the sign of the leper, the, the, the leprosy, the leprosy hand. Because you know leper is a sign of sin, right? Sign of sin and uncleanness. All right, so then he did that. And he says, and the Lord said to him down in verse, uh, uh, um, um, verse 9. And, and um, well, I know it's 4-8. Let's just, let's just read it. This, this is it. This is 4-8 right here. This is April 8th. And then God said, if they will not believe you or heed the voice of the testimony of the first sign, they shall believe the voice or the witness of the second sign. And if they will also not believe these two signs or heed your voice, you shall take some water of the river Nile and pour it upon the dry land and the water uh, of the Nile. Um, it will be turned to become blood. And the Moses said to the Lord, O oh Lord, I am not, now y'all better not get in trouble right here. You better not get in trouble like Moses did. We're not going to get in trouble. Say, I'm not going to get in trouble. And Moses said to the Lord, O Lord, I am not eloquent or a man of words, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant. For I am a slow speech, and I have a heavy and awkward tongue, and I have a country accent, Lord. What are you thinking? And Doris has Filipino accent. Why would you want her? Why would you want me? I got a country accent. Who's in here from New York? Lorraine, she ain't here today. Lord, she got a New York accent. God doesn't look at any of that. Or age. Or anything. Do you understand you're talking to God? He's smarter than you are. And you don't back, back talk him. And he said, Who has made man's mouth? And who makes the dumb or the deaf or the seeing or the blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Nor therefore, now therefore, go. What's the name of this church? Go. Why do we name this church Go? Because the Lord said, Go. He said in Mark 16, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, and these signs shall follow them that believe. And the number one sign was, You will cast out Lilith, Ishtar, and any other demon that gets in your way, because all authority is mine. You are the church. You are the church that I am building, and the gates of hell will not prevail against you. You release my authority. You take this rod, and you release my authority. I'm so thankful the bunch of Christians went up there like a bunch of crazy nuts and shut down that statue in Houston and said, Not here and not today, devil. Mm-mm-mm. Who is that called the devil? Hornhead? You can take your old hornhead and go right on back to the dry places. That's what she's got, horns. Like a goat. She's like that Baphomet. All right. The authority of God. And so it was a symbol. And, and, and in Luke 4, 18, what did Jesus say? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has what? Anointed me. Jesus is the anointed word. The word is anointed by the Holy Spirit of power and might. Amen? So when Moses took that rod and stretched it out over the Red Sea, what happened? The word of the Lord, man. The shepherd's rod of Moses is a symbol of the authority of God's anointed word. And he became a serpent on a pole to swallow up all the authority of the enemy and bondage to sin. And it is time to release his authority right now. It is time, as we approach Passover, it is time to release God's... It's the symbol of our deliverance that leads us out of bondage. 
The power of the rod caused Moses to tremble and to run. It was so powerful. Do we really know the power of God's word? Do we, we really tremble at his word? When we hear his word on our situation, is it enough for us to be settled in our hearts and our mind? Do we walk by faith? Are we rejecting the sight of every contradiction to his word? Do we, we, we reverence the word as the vehicle of God's presence? Can, can you see this rod of deliverance being stretched forth against your enemies today as you worship, as you speak his name, as you declare the written word of God over the contradicting circumstances? Can you see? Is that enough for you? See, then you got the Abrahamic kind of faith. Glory to God. And that's the kind of people that needs to take the authority of God and stretch it forth. Well, I'll believe the Red Sea will split, you know, when I see it. Moses didn't wait for the Red Sea to split before he put his rod out. He put his rod out first at the word of the Lord. The word has to come first. And whatever God says, that's what's going to happen. How many know we need, if we're going to release the authority of God in worship, then we need to add our faith to it. I, I want you to, have you got just a minute or two more? Look at Matthew 15. Matthew 15, 21 through 24. Go there real fast. I, and we'll just do a few of them. I'm not going, I'm not going to finish this message. We, we might finish it next week. But we'll start it, okay? We'll start cruising through a few passages here. Just enough so you can see what your marching orders are. Or this week, your homework. You got to see your homework. Matthew 15, 21. So, so listen, we don't argue with God. Oh, man, I missed it. I missed it. There was something else I was going to read to you. Hold on. Let me go back to Exodus 4, and then we'll go to Matthew. Exodus 4. I didn't finish reading that. Verse 13 and 14. And, and he said, Oh, my Lord, I pray you send Send by the hand of some other whom I will send, whom you will send. Okay, so Moses didn't want to go, did he? And he said, I, I can't talk right, and I'd just rather you send somebody else. What happened to the Lord? Verse 14, it said the anger of the Lord blazed against Moses. Now, you want to make God mad? Do you want to make God mad? Then argue with him as to why you can't obey Mark 16. I'm not going there. When he resurrected, the Bible said he went in to his disciples and he upbraided them for their unbelief. Now, I don't know what upbraids means and I, don't want, I do not want to find out. I just know I don't want any part of it. So I'm going to believe, and we're going to go. We're going to go. If God says, go, Simone, he doesn't care if i got a country accent. He does not care. He doesn't care that I haven't been to the top Bible schools. He doesn't care. He just said, go. Yeah. So we're going to go. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to go and just do whatever we can find to do. Feed the poor. Heal the sick. Go visit the people in prison. Do whatever you can find to do. Do what you can do. Do Just do something. Besides, sit. He didn't say sit. He said go. And I'm not going to argue with him. Now, Matthew 15, 21. And I don't want him upbraiding me, and I don't want his anger blazing. Okay? So y'all, Listen. Judgment is coming like a freight train. And I want it to hit my enemies, but I don't want him to be spanking me. We're going to line up. We're going to repent in Jesus' name. All right? Matthew 15, 21. Going away from there, Jesus withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman who was a Canaanite. She was a Canaanite. From the district came out. And you know what? She probably worshipped Ishtar and all of that, all that mess. She worshiped all that mess, all this mess. She's all up in it. That's what the Canaanites were. Somebody's in the twilight zone. You feel like you're in the twilight zone, don't you? With this eclipse and Ishtar and all these fires breaking out, it, that was a good ringtone. That was perfect. And behold, okay, so she's, she's coming. 
and, and she's, uh, she's, she came out and, and with a loud, troublesomely urgent cry, begged, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is miserably, distressingly, and cruelly possessed by a demon. So she's crying out. And he, he didn't even talk to her. And he did not answer her a word. Do y'all understand? He, she did not get God's attention by begging and screaming and crying. And you won't either. He did not answer her a word. Do y'all want to get God's attention? Do you want to get Je Do you want to attract Jesus to yourself? Do you want to attract the answer to your prayer? Do you want to know how to get him to talk to you? To give you attention? To come to your house? To speak a word over you? Do y'all want to know what it takes? He did not answer her a word, and his disciples came and implored him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out at us. And he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He's on a mission, isn't he? He's on a mission. He knows he's been commissioned by the Heavenly Father to go to the house of Israel, and it is not time for the Canaanites to come in. He's got to finish this job first. Now, isn't he on point? He is not going to be distracted from his job and from his calling and from his mission by anybody. He said, I'm not even going to talk to her. I've been called to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and I've got to finish that first. Boy, I like him. He's on point. Boy, he bullseye. Oh, man, but he, he did and he answered, and, he, and, he, and, and, and she came, and she, and then what did she do? Verse 25, and she came kneeling and worshipped him. Okay, well, that's a game changer. Say worship, worship. is a game changer. She came kneeling. She didn't get offended, did she? She knew what she was. She knew what her people were. She knew what they were doing with the Ishtar and the, and the temple prostitutes and everything else and abortion and Molech and all of that and Baal and on and on and on. But she came kneeling and worshipped him. How many of this is a sinful nation? Full of demonic power. But if this nation will bow its knee and worship the Lord, we'll get God's attention. And she kept praying. Because what did Bob say? Ask. And keep on asking. I'll emphasize. Ask and keep on asking. Knocking. Keep on knocking. Seeking. Keep on seeking. And she kept praying, Lord, help me. But she's worshiping. And that's what changed everything. She fell at his feet. She humbled herself. She knelt down. And she worshiped. And worship got his attention. And he answered, it is not right and proper to become, but you know, he, he ain't playing easy, is he? It is not right, proper, becoming, or fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. But you know what? She got an audience. She got an audience, didn't she? At least now he's talking to her and he's saying, it's not right to take the children's bread. I've come to Israel. I've got to come to them first. They are the children of Abraham and I have, they have a covenant and I've got to talk to them. And it's not right. Healing is the children's bread. Because healing is the children's bread, right? To throw it to the dogs. Because you people are living like dogs. You're living like dogs. There's no, there's, no, there's no morality. There's no marriage covenant. There's no love for family. How many of you have seen the Doritos spokesman they chose over in Spain? This guy, he is flat out telling you they've chosen this man, this drag queen guy, for the spokesman in Spain for Doritos, and he's coming right out telling you he's pro-pedophilia, he is anti-family, and he even openly boasts how he molested his 12-year-old cousin. Supporting it fully and that everybody should too. That's the garbage Jesus was dealing with. The devil never changes. All right, but look what she did. He answered, he said, it's not right to take the, the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, yes, Lord. She agreed with him. E yet even the little pups, the little whelps, eat the crumbs that fall from your young master's table. 
And then Jesus answered her, Oh, woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you wish. And what happened to that demonic spirit on her daughter? Boom, it broke the demonic spirit over the children. Come on, y'all. Do you see a demonic assignment on our children? I'm about to cry right here. If we will start worshiping God and releasing his authority in the name of Jesus and the word of God over this nation, it will break the demonic stronghold that's killing our children. Glory to God. That's awesome, y'all. He wouldn't even talk to her, but she changed her approach, and she began to worship him. And she knew his mission, but oh, no, 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 no. She wasn't going to take no for an answer. Because even though she knew his mission, she also knew his heart. She had him. She had him, and she wasn't taking no for an answer. Because I know you're a good God. And I know you're compassionate. And I know you wouldn't starve the little puppies. You even love the little puppies. Come on. You might give children bread first. But even the little puppies, you care about everything. You care about the birds. Come on, y'all. You care about the little flowers. You care about everything. And worship was the game changer. Worship Worship that included, listen what it included. Her worship included her faith in his compassion. That he's a good God and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Did y'all get anything out of this today? Praise God. Then let's all stand and do that. Let's release some authority in here and worship the Lord. Come on, just, just take a minute and just worship him. Father, we just worship you. We worship you. We add worship to the prayer of justice we just prayed. Come on, y'all. When we pray the prayer of justice, we got to add some worship to it. we got to add some thanksgiving. So let's take that, that, that prayer right now, and let's add this thanksgiving with it. Lord, we are thanking you that you are a God of justice, that you care about our children, that you care about these people on fentanyl, that you care about these people who, Lord God, uh, you care about the little babies that are being aborted. You care about the women that are aborting them. God, you care about this nation. You care about families that are being seduced and torn apart with a, with a, with a demonic forces of adultery and fornication. God, you care, you care, you care about all of these broken hearts and broken lives and these little children, God, that are being thrown away and out on the streets with no families. God, you care, you care, you care. And we praise you. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God. We love you, Lord God. We bless you, God. We bless you, Jesus. We praise you. We honor you, God. We humble ourselves. We give ourselves to you afresh and anew. God, we repent of all of our sin. We repent for worshiping idols. We repent of putting anything as a priority over you and over your word. And God, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. You are Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. We make you Lord of our lives, Lord of this land. Be Lord. We declare Jesus is Lord over America. Jesus is Lord. God, have mercy like you did on Nineveh. You spared Nineveh, Lord. You spared Nineveh. And so we worship you, Lord. You spared Jonah in the well. He was in the well, and he began to worship. And the well spit him out. Lord, we're in a well. We're in a well. And God, we just worship you in that well. We just worship you. We worship you before anything has changed in our circumstances, before anything in this nation has changed, before anything in our lives has changed. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. And I plead the blood of Jesus over you and your house and over your children and your grandchildren. We break the demonic spell of Jezebel over our nation over the church, over the Christians that refuse to take a stand. We break the spell of Jezebel in Jesus' name. 
And we thank you, Lord, for setting our nation free from tyranny. Thank you, Lord, for setting our nation free from bondage. Thank you for setting our nation free from, from tyrants. Let me throw this one out there to you y'all, and, and worship on this one. Biden just made a proposal. To, to, he's, he's proposed. It ain't been passed or nothing. But he is proposing something that will stop Christians. It will not allow Christians to have foster kids. In Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for the turnaround. I thank you for the turnaround. I thank you, Lord, that you're the God of Esther. You're the God of Moses. You're the God of Israel. You're the God that rose from the dead on the third day. You're the God of all authority. And I thank you, Lord, that you set up kings and you tear them down. You're the God that demonstrated in the rod of Moses that you have all authority over serpents and over scorpions and all the symbols of Pharaoh's power. It has been stripped, and it is yours. And we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Now say this with me. Say, I will obey this day. To go go. and demonstrate demonstrate. as I preach the gospel gospel. with signs and wonders, I will ask ask for boldness boldness. to be demonstrated demonstrated. through me. me. Right now, in Jesus' name, I'm asking for boldness to demonstrate demonstrate. your power, your your authority authority in the earth. And to win the lost in Jesus' name. Now, I don't know what's going to happen after these um, eclipses. I've heard things about earthquakes and things like that they've been talking about for years. Up there on that, um, what do you call it? The the fault line. No, not the St. Andrews. The one that's over where this. The Madras. The Madras fault line. All of that. But, uh, uh, but I know one thing. I know the Bible says there's a whole lot of shaking going on. And the Lord said everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And you know who they're going to come to to find answers? You. So y'all better do your homework. We got to do our homework. And we got to give these people an answer. And we got it for the hope that's in us of why we're not shaken. And why we, we're not moved. And why it's not coming on to our house. Come on, y'all. We got to give an answer. Because we're in the refuge. Jesus is our refuge. Amen. Amen. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior out there, you need to get in the refuge. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear God, I repent of my sin. I ask you to forgive me. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I believe that you took my sin to the cross, died for me, and rose again on the third day. So make me a new person. Change everything in my life that you don't want. I give myself wholly to you. Use me any way you want to. I want to live for you in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, put right in the comments that you prayed. Just put, I prayed. I prayed. Right in the comments. And and if y'all got anything out of this day, like, share it, go home, do your homework. We love you. We want to speak a blessing of peace over you today and grace in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Uh, Keep reading your Psalm 91. And if anybody needs prayer for anything today, I'll be up here and I'll be praying for you. Um, If you need hands laid on you, if you've been sick or you want hands laid on you or anything like that, we'll, we'll pray over that. Don't leave without prayer. But Brother Glenn's going to come up and close us out.